but you break off like you literally have like a big old chunk of ginger and you throw it down at the uh, supermarket and they go 11 pence you think, how are ginger farmers no. making this work no and also ginger feels like it should be more it just feels middle classy and yeah and luxurious doesn't it then again maybe there's just so much of it being used it's just a volume thing Welcome to Rob and Jeff talk about the Mandalorian. Uh, we always like to start with a little bit of supermarket chat, don't we? Yes, yeah. I, I also am conscious that as we record this, we haven't put up episode chapter four, and we were we absolutely slated chapter four. So we have no idea what the reaction to the reaction is. That's a very YouTube thing. Yeah, sure. But what I would say is, um, I'm so passionate about our opinions on chapter four. I couldn't give a yeah. shit what people think about what I've got saying. something for you before we move on. on. In, 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 with chapter four in mind. Oh, mate. Have a look at that. So there's a story behind this, yeah? At last oh. Christmas, I wanted to get Seb, my son, something Star Wars-y. I went in there. This was just like a plastic. It's just plastic, right? I so I yeah. thought, oh, that, that What do you want cool. it to be made of? The actual material that the thing's made of? <laughs> and with a shit. Oh, by the way, a Clatuinian Raider in there. Nice. Was and, that, did uh, it come with a Clatuinian Raider? Or have you put that did. in there? Okay. It did. That would be a bit much, I think. Uh, but I picked it up thinking it felt really light, like a piece of shit. Do you, do you want to guess how much this cost? I mean, obviously, I've, I've led you down by the nose, but just it's, it's how hollow it is. I it would say, be... I reckon, I don't know, 12 quid. £100. A hundred pounds? Yeah. I mean, I mean, having said that, right at this point, showing it on this, I could write off a tax now, finally. It does look, it lo looks detailed. It looks really cool, but it doesn't even stand up, mate. It's on the piss. Uh, does he play with it? No. It's just, this is the first time anyone's got any use out of it. So, chapter five, Jeff. Yes, the gunslinger. Uh, do you want to, I mean, we went into this with trepidation, right? I'm, well, I'm, I'm so suggesting we watched it together. We didn't watch it together. and we, Nor did we do a Zoom party where you and I were sat in our respective homes. I do want to make that crystal clear. Yes. I watched this separately. No, I did. Both, I we did both separately this. had trepidation about it. We did have trepidation, but my God, were my fears allayed. Two minutes in, we've had a dog fight in space. There's oh! Nothing. I, you know what? I thought to myself, when I saw that, I thought, Jeff is going to be so, so happy. Yeah. I've seen spaceships, I've seen lasers, I've seen explosions. And, and it did feel like, and I know this isn't how it went down, but they just went, they finished watching Chapter 4 themselves and went, we need a dogfight. We need something blowing up. In the, in the first one, I don't give a fuck. I don't even give a fuck. We don't even need to give the character a name. It doesn't have to link to anything else in the story. Because it didn't, did it? it no, we didn't. Well, they, they needed they needed his ship to be damaged. Yeah. And uh, thank God they didn't just go down the route of him just sort of tapping one of the gauges and going, "Oh bollocks!" Yeah. Oh, the old Shamafaka's gone. I'm going to have to land yeah. at a nearby planet and sort this out. So at least they gave us an exciting reason for his ship to be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> it's just great to go back there, and it, it looked very much like the Mos Eisley of. Um, a new hope and i just there was some there were some fantastic details like you go straight into the bar the cantina and well known for that they don't serve droids who's who's running the bar i know it's just a droid who years ago just was insulted probably by that barman and just went away and thought i'm gonna one day mate I wonder, I'm it reminded me of uh, Back to the Future when, uh, what's that was exactly what I was thinking about. Ah, mayor! Yeah. I'm gonna be mayor! Rudy Wilson. <laughs> I like the sound of that. I don't know if his name is Rudy Wilson. And it might no. have been... No. And, it also, been and also, you do the impression of him, of him just saying his own name. <laughs> and, and the impression was going towards Shrek. Donkey out of Shrek. Rudy Wilson. I well, like apart it. from that, apart from that. Yeah. And we'll be having... Waffles. Um, we're, gonna no, we're gonna stay up late, we're gonna swap man stories. In the morning, I'm making waffles. And then this is where we have our, our, our start, our, draw, our engine for the episode, basically. Yes, Toro, I can't remember his surname. 
I, I'm sure that you, you had views on his appearance. And I, my first instinct was Nick Lachey is in Star Wars. And then it was more like someone from MTV Real World Series 3. He's a sort of guy that I imagine, if I was in that circle of people, of actors that might be going up for this part, he'd yeah. be the most annoying of the people that I know that are going up for that part. He just looks... You know, you'd be so gutted that somebody that looked like that got the part. Do you know what I mean? It, it, you you know. would, but in a way, I don't know, maybe that worked for the character because he was a character that wanted to be a bounty hunter more than should have been a bounty hunter. Yeah. So it, same way in the audition, maybe he was a guy that wanted to be in Star Wars rather than should have been in Star Wars. He'd be one of those bounty hunters that's like on Instagram all the time, do you know what I mean? Putting up <laughs> selfies of him next to sort of kills and shit like that, do you know what I mean? And sort of getting his following up that way. His feet up with a dead Greedo by his legs going, not bad for a Monday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it was literally the way that he was sitting there was like he'd watched with uh, Han Solo. He just seemed like, you know, in the same way that Kylo Ren is like a Darth Vader tribute act. Yeah, yeah. He just seemed to be try, but it, uh, just trying to pull it off. But he wasn't at this point in the guild, was he? So No, he's, he's, trying, trying to get, he's trying to get into the guild, isn't he? This is going to be the job that got him into the guild. Just before, can you just rewind a sec, actually? You've gone on a bit there. Just before, can you just rewind a sec? Actually, you've gone on a bit there. Can we just say, like, when when he touches down in, in Moss Eisley in Bay 35 or wherever it is, yeah. Um, I, who's that, like, sort of Amy Sedaris, who is yes. the woman that runs the thing? Yeah. He's probably the fifth character in this that seems to have stepped straight out of, like, a Netflix comedy special, just speaking in her usual rhythms. I no know. To the universe whatsoever. I don't. I, I wondered about that because I think to myself, like, I wonder if that's um, a symptom of like you get cast in the Mandalorian, and you think to yourself, well, I don't really, I don't. Want, I, I'm a bit worried about what that's going to do for my brand. So the way that you deal with that is you both want to be part of the Star Wars universe, and you don't want to undermine what you do. So you just go, I'm going to be exactly how I am on everything else. In yeah. the Mandalorian. I'm going to make absolutely no concessions to the fact that I'm in this, I'm in this whole new world. It was so crazy, right? Well, she was so like a Netflix special comedian that her entrance, it should have just been coming behind her and showing her walking up some stairs. With an audience, then... with an audience showing completely, a, a level of reverence that's completely disproportionate to her profile. <laughs> Mandalorian's decision to leave Baby Yoda on the ship. I mean, I was thinking about this, first time dad. That's all you can really say. Yeah, but Jeff, first time dad, you go the other way. You, True. You, do you know what I mean? You, you like first time dad, you're worrying too much. I get that. If that was the third baby Yoda he found, I get it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You leave <laughs> that in the ship overnight. But that's his first. That's his first kid. I just don't buy him leaving that in the ship and, and going off like that. And also the fact that his entrance to that planet is because yet another person was trying to kill him to get the asset. Yeah. And then he's, you know what he's done, right? He is, you know now, like when people, like middle-aged couples pick babysitters, there has to be like this huge approval. It's like joining the Rotary Club. You need to get like commended and almost brought into the guild. He's just gone, literally, he's gone up to a teenager on the street and go, can you... Just me and my wife going away for a weekend. Can, can you look after my child? <laughs> He's in search of work to make the payment for the, for the damage to the ship, right? So yeah. he needs that to get off the thing. So he goes into this, he goes, he goes and meets this uh, Nick Lachey. <laughs> and, um, and this guy's got a job hunting the most dangerous woman around, it seems. I, did, I, couldn't, I didn't take her name down. I'm going to say it was something like Delicious Fleck. Bodacious <laughs> Helena. Bodacious Crimp. You're not getting any female characters that are quite good. Yeah. You know, maybe haven't devoted themselves enough to the craft of, of kicking ass. And so you, you could probably have them. That, you don't have that. You just no. have absolutely... Do not even look at them wrong because they'll eviscerate you, character. Yeah. yeah. There's some very deadly women in the Star Wars universe. Who knows? There, there, might be, there might be a justification about this. During the Galactic Civil War, as it was called, a lot of uh, men were away fighting. Yeah. I mean, it might, even be, it might even be introduced later on in the series, and now we're going to be exposed as the, uh, as the misogynist twats that, we, that, we, that we're worried that we're going to look like. Do you know what I mean? It's some, way, some point down the line, 
there's going to be some storyline that explains it. And then people are going to call, call back to this episode. Yeah. This could be what we get cancelled for. Is, so I guess these, is what I'm these saying. two dinosaurs. Maybe there's something in, in the force. You know, like in the same way that uh, women's immune systems are better at dealing with coronavirus. Maybe women's immune systems are like they're metachlorians, it turns out, are more force sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> this is the great thing about the Star Wars universe. <clears throat> the best thing to do is not talk about the Star Wars that did happen. Yeah. It's the Star Wars that hasn't happened. Yeah. Like, do you remember after The Force Awakens? Like, just the theories went wild. It was why everyone was so upset with The Last Jedi, because none of the theories were correct. Yeah, but well, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Is, is that we're, we're now in a world in Star Wars, and that's why the, something like The Mandalorian is exciting, is that <laughs> Star Wars, the main storylines, so many people have, uh, you know, have fantasised about what their ideal storyline is. Do you know what I mean? so that there is absolutely no way that wherever the story goes can meet that expectation. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like somebody who's been raised on Pornhub, then trying to engage <laughs> themselves in a regular relationship. But the Mandalorian, this is the thing I didn't understand. Hmm. He initially says no, because he says this yeah. woman is going to be, you don't know what you're talking about, this woman will destroy you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then he just says, please, can you? He says, I'll give you all the money. I just need to get into the guild. And then my interpretation is the Mandalorian kind of took pity on him. But do you think it was purely the money? I mean, what do, what do you think? What's your take on it? Well, I think it was, a bad, it was potentially a bad call. Because uh, you felt like he could have fought his way out of that space hangar uh, anyway. I, it did seem as though there was potential there. To, I mean, like, let's, let's jump ahead a little bit. It did seem as though there was potential there to... I mean, like, let's, let's jump ahead a little bit. He does get killed, this lad, at the end of the episode. Yes, he does. And so th I did wonder, is, is this... I, I, found that, I found that disappointing, by the way. Well, they're killing too many people. Every time they set up a character, bang. Like, the, the character... Also, they... But the other thing is, though, Jeff, is that guy... I mean, now we're... we're but that guy gets killed by the Mandalorian, and rightly so, because he's proven to be a prick, right? But, yeah. but there's no time for him to reflect. When he got shot, I was yeah. sort of hoping he was like lying there with you know blood pouring out, and then the Mandalorian comes over and he goes, I guess I should have known not to mess with you. Like yeah. that, you know, something like that where you go, that bit where you have that remorse from the guy, do you know what I mean? For for, for messing with the Mandalorian, you know? This is the way, or just or maybe next time, or, or the Mandalorian says something like a little bit of part and advice, which wouldn't be that useful, because he's dead. Yeah. You think about it from uh, Toro, from Nick Lachey's point of view, right? What he's tried to do there as a first job is un unbelievably ambitious, in a way. He's tried, I mean, he's tried to, I mean, there was a moment, didn't you, where, where you thought that woman had got inside his head, she would kill him, and then it would be between her and the Mandalorian. Then he shows a moment of good sense that she would have killed him anyway. But then he goes for the big sort of triple play home run. I mean, he wants to he wants to basically encore at the comedy store in his first open spot, and he got booed off. It was a weird it was a weird thing to have a prize that was way beyond your expectations, way beyond like dream come true stuff. Yeah. To then gamble that, you know. Insanity. I, I couldn't, but I, I, I actually, I've got to be honest with you, it was so crazy, it bumped me from the storyline. The thing with the jumbo blur, I just thought, how can you have the patience? I saw how long it took them to, to go on the speeders. Yeah. And he's ridden that thing slower than, seems to me slower than human walking pace, by the way, that thing moves up. Yeah. To, to ride that all the way back. I've read a thing about the Mandalorian where they were saying they like the fact that he's not, he doesn't win all these victories easily. You know, he's, yeah. he's struggling. Or, you know, he just about makes, you know, there's a bit of jeopardy there. But he seemed almost suicidal in this gunfight with this woman, didn't he? It was uh, to, to stand front on in front of somebody that's got a, effectively a sniper rifle seemed like an incredible decision, didn't it? Well, because, yeah, because he goes back and then he says, yeah, the best guy's strong enough. He goes, I would have I maybe found another way of finding that out, you know, just throwing something out there. 
He goes, yeah, yeah, so I'm still alive, so I think... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that worked out. He's good in battle, but emotionally, this guy's all over the fucking yeah, shop, isn't he? Yeah. He's, all, he's leaving the kid on the ship. He's working with, like, non-guild members on jobs. He's getting engaged. With, he's le he, leaving... Randomly leave. I don't know why he thinks Baby Yoda's going to stay on the ship. Every single time he's done that, Baby Yoda has followed him. I don't know. He, they don't even speak the same language. He hasn't got any words to say. He just no. goes, stay on the ship. Now, if anyone's had a toddler, just stay on the ship without any threat of sanctions. You're not going to be allowed to play with that little gear stick knob if you carry on, if, if, you, if you follow me out of the ship. I think you're absolutely right. I think we, we all viewed the, the him conceding on the gear stick knob as quite a cute moment, but I, I, I don't think that's good parenting in the long run. No. I mean, you're, you're at the cockpit of a ship. If, if they, take off another gear stick knob and let him play independently with that, but please, nowhere near the actual ship controls. <laughs> and what, what the fuck are the rest of the, uh, the covert of Mandalorians thinking of him at this point? I don't know if they've got him on sort of, sort of tracking him on some grid. Going, no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what... It feels... Bearing in mind that they completely, you know, outed themselves to help him. They had to move the covert. Yeah, he's not even... doesn't seem to be like he's even sent an email or something to sort of <laughs> let him know what he's up to or what the long-term plan is or if he's planning on helping him out. You know, he was so concerned about the covert that he was, he was handing over most of his earnings to the army, yeah. and now all of a sudden he couldn't give a shiny shit about them. It makes, it makes no sense. I don't understand what his motivations are. I think that what's happened is, like a lot of men, his, his life situation has fundamentally changed with a baby, but he's trying to carry on like he did before, so he just sort of thinks that he can bounce from job to job. And it's, it's, it's no life for a baby Yoda. No. That. At some time he's going to have to go to sort of baby Yoda school yeah. and, learn, and learn the ways of the Force. I felt like this episode, should have been the one where we found out who, want, who, is, who is after the baby Yoda. Mm. But we did at the end get a moment of intrigue where, what was it, Bodacious Crimp? Bodacious Crimp, yeah. She, uh, she was lying there dead and after, and then there, there was a slightly caked figure standing over her. Um, I mean, like in, in the fan service community, I think that there's, there's, people want that to be Boba Fett. I don't want that to be Boba Fett. Mm, no, me neither. Because the, the effort that they'd have to go in to show how Boba Fett I know. survived the Sarlacc period. I know. There's a, moment, there's a moment of excitement that it's Boba Fett. And then there's the realisation that you're going to have to see all of the explanation of yeah. how that came to pass, which is obviously going to be fucking mind-numbing and completely implausible. <laughs> If anything, I'd have more respect if they literally went back to that scene and just showed the Sarlacc with reflux. <laughs> just spits him back out. Because it was, in, it was a, the most inglorious death of any of the revered Star Wars legacy characters. It, well, okay, but what, why do you revere him, Jeff? Well, I sort of did over time. I mean, one of the points that's been made about a lot of Star Wars characters is they don't have a lot of screen time. No, and so the, but Boba Fett is somebody who... I like, you know, there's always something cool about a guy that wears a helmet all the time. I get that. I totally get yeah. that. Right? I understand that. Sort of enigmatic. But the level of reverence is, is completely disproportionate to what that guy has done, right? I mean, that's... What he is he second guesses Solo um, sort of attaching himself to the back of that Imperial Star Cruiser and then tracks him, right? After that, I'm not seeing any... I mean, he's hanging around. He's, he's basically on the session at Jabba's Palace for evidently several months. Yeah. Kissing about with blue women, right? And then he's there when it goes down on the sail barge. And, and in the end, he's, <laughs> he dies for having his jetpack accidentally activated by a blind bloke. Yeah, that, I mean, that is... Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind Nick Lachey. Do you know what I mean? Love going back to Moss Eisley. It just should have been a bit longer. I think the pursuit of this... This person who we're told is fucking hard as nails, they just find her in like a minute. Yeah, yeah. And she, it was she, almost like a sitcom episode, wasn't it, in terms of the pacing of it? It was like... It was. They just sort of wander along for a bit and then, oh, there she is, she's over there. Uh, let's go get her. You did make the point, Jeff. Yeah. When we first started doing this, that you weren't sure 
if the epicness of Star Wars translated to this kind of this length of show, right? Yeah. And I think that might be a symptom of that because it just felt you sort of go, well, I, this girl, this woman is apparently difficult to get hold of, get to capture because the Mandalorian has told us that. There's very yeah. little evidence of that based on what I've seen in this episode. Do you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. She seems it's not it's not been completely easy to get her, but. They didn't struggle. I mean, they didn't struggle hugely. Bear in mind, he said, you're definitely going to die if you try this. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't that much of an ask, was it, in the end? I mean, And she shows herself completely ignorant in the matter of uh, the properties of Beskar Steel. Yeah. Doesn't work that out, despite shooting in point-blank range. One, not... one of the most dangerous people around doesn't know that that gun's not going to work against Beskar Steel. That's, that's, that seems like an oversight to me. <laughs> I just need some art narrative arc to this now. I need. I feel like this is the middle movement of something. Well, we've had two, we've had two episodes that don't seem to have any bearing on anything really. That's that's the issue, isn't it? But it's not. It's... Go on. Well, did it... I have to? I have to say that I was sort of thinking wistfully back to chapter four and, and wow. They... It wasn't that bad. I mean, like visually. Don't don't get me wrong. It's easy to forget how good I felt being back. Uh, in in Mos Eisley, but Jeff, imagine that episode not on Mos Eisley. <laughs> it's true. Well, like, what would you think? What would you think about that episode? Unacceptable, uh, content-wise. It's not story-wise. Everything-wise, you tell you're right. If you stick that on some like two bob Star Wars planet, you know, like one of one of those weird ones they show in um, Rogue One. Yeah, Gareth B or something. You'd be furious. <laughs> We'd both be furious. We, we, do you know what? If it wasn't Mos Eisley, you and I would. We this would be the last episode of this. We, we, this we'd, we'd, yeah, we'd just be going. Uh, uh, this is a waste of both of our times. However, as much as my conviction is strong that that, um, that these were really shit, <laughs> <laughs> um, I do think that episode six is going to be good. I do. I do chapter six. I do think it's going to be good. It can't not be. I don't think this much money could go into something. I think that they knew that they got us with one to three. Chapter four and five, maybe they're building towards something that, that's going to make good, but they weren't great episodes. Yeah. They weren't great episodes. So I think episode six, there has to be an antagonist or something, an overarching bad guy figure. I can't see how this, this series can exist without it. Yeah. I mean, I know we said this last time, a lot hinges on the next episode. <laughs> A lot of hinges on the next. So that feels like a good, you know, like a cliffhanger. Yeah, maybe that's maybe this is a new way of keeping people intrigued in a series where you go, stop. This this cannot be what this is. I tell you what, I'm going to watch the next episode to see if they save this. It's 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 a it's a it's a, it's a different way of doing it. It's certainly working with us though because I'm really looking forward to seeing if Chapter Six salvages this. Well, they also, it's just like they know with blokes of our age that we're never going to abandon this thing. We're never going to do it. Because otherwise, time, what do we do? What, what's the options? You then start engaging with your wife and kids again. I mean, it's just... Or, or, or worse still, watch Star Trek. I'm not doing that. <laughs> we should go out as we came in. Yeah. £100. £100. I mean, in many ways, this is a good symbol so far for the series of The Mandalorian. It's a lot of money, isn't it? I'm basically paying. It's, it's a lot of money. It looks quite nice, but it doesn't stand up. <laughs> That's a great out, mate. Thanks, thanks for saving me. I was literally at the point of saying oh, I've got nothing. Here. <laughs>